What is up? It is the Figure Hunter, and today we're going to talk about my final thoughts on the Ultra Human Ring Air. So I have been wearing the Ring Air for maybe three months now, so it's kind of behind in when I should have finished the final thoughts review. Um, we're going to look at some ins and outs, but we're not going to probably look at every in and out. We're going to talk about some of this stuff more conceptually with my experience with a primary leader ring on the market, and we're going to compare it in general to what I think the value is relative to Aura, which is the leading ring on the market for the most part, at least here in the US. So the Ultra Human Ring Air has been, you know, what it does is it provides you a comprehensive wellness and recovery, sort of a holistic health insights into your body through a myriad of data points, metrics that you can dive into, looking primarily at three tenets, so you have the tenet of your movement, like how active you were just in general, like your general movement for the day. You have your tenet of your recovery, which is a culmination of some physiological metrics that um, give insight into how the last night's sleep was relative to your general metrics on average. And then you have the uh, sleep analysis, which goes into your last night's sleep compared to other general trends within your multiple last night's sleeps. So we're going to start at the beginning of the experience with the Ultra Human Ring Air. And I would say like it was on point. It's funny because it's coming from a foreign country, but every single bit of the process, like getting the sizing kit, getting the sizing kit, the sizing kit was clean, it, all just like Aura. Although it was just, it arrived from like a foreign country. I just thought they, they're pretty good at this. They're getting, they nailed it as far as like executing what would be, and I don't, you know, what would be an experience you would expect in today's world, but executing it from a far away place. They did it well, which was surprising. It took more time than other companies, but I, with Aura, I feel like every step of this process took like two weeks or four weeks or some long period of time. So they're not knocking the cover off the ball in any way. Ultra Human did it better, um, even though from a further place. So the Ultra Human Ring Air, the sizing kit, I got a size, and this is my recommendation, is to get a size that's not like the biggest finger on your hands. Because I have, you'll see, I, some of my data is just a little bit choppy because I jammed a finger that I normally wear it on. Thankfully, I can wear it on another finger on another hand um, because it's about the same size. So my middle finger on my right hand is about the same size as my forefinger, front finger, you know, on my left hand. So I just didn't choose to wear it because I wasn't used to it. And I just, you know, just stopped wearing, you know, there was intermittent choppy times that I was not wearing the ring. But I would go with that type of size. Go with something that could fit on two different fingers for the most part, so that if you have an issue with one finger, you can keep getting your information. So that um, is my recommendation and my experience with the sizing kit. I have been, and I'll say about Ultra Human, I have been communicating with some of the developers because they allowed me to test this. Um, they don't control anything about, you know, what I think of it and what I'm gonna say and the negatives. Um, but they are the most responsive team I've ever come across with a company. So that says a lot to me about the company in general, that they are eager to really compete in this market. And to me, that is a very valuable thing. On the flip side, when I did test the Aura, I got it and then I did not like some of the experience that I had and I returned it and that process was a nightmare. So I'm gonna have to assume they've gotten a lot better. I can't speak today because there are a lot of Aura users out there. So I think they've gotten their foundation. Look at this. I, that's why I just I stopped to take a picture because it's just like so scenic. Like the sunrise coming through, the little backdrop here, the little trail. It's just like a picture from Narnia. So, okay, so I had my Narnia moment. But when you go to look at all the things it provides, so it, I feel like it's comfortable. It is big. It takes getting used to. And I, I can be honest, like three months later, I'm not still totally used to it. Um, because it's, you know, it's a felt size. So oh, as technology improves, but the amount of data, so we're gonna talk about like the pros and the cons now. We're gonna get into the thick of it. God, I keep walking through cobwebs. My hair probably looks atrocious. When you get into the thick of the pros and cons, 
let's just dive into what my final experience is with the Ultra Human Ring Air. On the pro side, I feel like versus Aura as well, they have so much accessible data, so much data you could look at. They, you can really dive into all the details of any part or subset of analytics within this. You can access, you know, trends, details, history over a long period of time. You can zoom back and forth across a long period of time. It's fantastic in that regard, and they've done such a good job at executing that. They've really just, you know, they, they really compiled. So the size of the ring and the feel, or oh, it's a little bit discomfort, you know, not comfortable, I'm not used to it. Um, and I feel that three months later. It's really pulling in a lot of information. And so you just got to buckle up and take it because the size of discomfort any of that stuff because this little tiny ring is getting a ton of info and it's getting it in like 87 different pieces of a spectrum and we're not even going to dive into like what may be a detailed part of it we're just sort of looking at the app and just sort of seeing the details you can get out of it um so all that is really powerful they're really big on stimulant window um that is a pro and a con i don't really love that you know it's like trying to take that sort of vantage point that your first 90 minutes you don't you're living off your cortisol or something like that from your waking up you don't need caffeine so you don't take in caffeine in that period of time and then after that is your stimulant window and then it tapers off your stimulant window they have a lot of pop-ups that come up which are again really useful for guidance way more that i remember experiencing on aura so they're giving a lot of holistic guidance, like ideal bedtime, you know, so they have a stimulant taper window later. Some of that stuff, because I manage my own thing, um, I do my own stuff, I'm aware of my stimulant window when I want to drink coffee, it's not 90 minutes after I wake up. So some of that's a little annoying, but it's all completely and totally available to get that information in that direction. So the real pro is, is in, in my opinion, with the experience so far, is that you have access to so much information, so much guidance to your overall health and wellness, and so much direction. Um, in the middle ground is what nobody does well on a ring, and that's track a workout. So I don't look at this as a workout tracking device at all. And I, you, you, you definitely could not look at the Aura as a workout tracking device at all. So don't believe any of the rings that say this is a workout tracking device. Maybe if you're running or maybe if you're on a stationary bike and you're holding your hand up, would it be a workout tracking device in some regard? But overall, none of these are. So there's nobody doing it. So that's sort of a middle ground. I don't even consider that a con. I just consider that a fact, that that's just what you have to face. I don't bother with tracking a workout. Obviously, I'm doing barbell work and CrossFit and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna wear a thick ring to do that. Although I did, I wore a thick ring to do it for like three weeks, and it was okay, I'm gonna survive. I mean, it's like, again, um, you can do anything, but it, it doesn't track workouts. And so that leads to a slight con, although it's not a big con again. Aura can't do any of these things either. Aura can't track workouts. It says it can, everybody, none of these things do. So you need to have a separate device for tracking workouts. This is more of a holistic health and wellness device, as is Aura. So a con with how they're doing things, and this is a minor con, then we'll get into the more major con. So a con with how Ultra Human's handling things is they have this movement index. It's one of their three primary tenets. And <laughs> I don't mind it, I just walked through a, a cobweb. Um, it's like the 12th one this morning. So on the movement index, you, you can't track workouts on it. And you can port in your workouts. I linked it and I poured it in my workouts so I could see the workouts somewhat to some level in my Ultra Human app. But it'll tell me continually, even though I did, if I, if I just in general worked at my desk and then did a four hour exercise, four hour workout that was intense and broke me to my core, um, because it doesn't 
even though it poured it in that workout, it doesn't take that as a part of the movement index. It'll tell me I'm fat and lazy in my movement index. It'll have red, which I just hate seeing red, especially when I know that I just had a, you know, my workouts are an hour and a half. So I just had an hour and a half workout. And it's saying like, you know, your movement index needs attention, red, you know, you're not, you know, exercising enough. Well, that's just because the ring wasn't with me for the workout and they can't see that ported in uh, training session. So that's, you know, part of the, that's a, I would say that's a minor con because it is giving me information. So I try to do whatever I can to turn off the movement index because I just feel like it's not getting that right. Um, it's not based on reality of information that's even available to it. And that developers are trying to work on a way to fix that. So that's the minor con, same issue with Aura. Aura is the same, similar. Um, the major con, and this is, I gotta say, this is the same as Aura, the same. And it's, you know, it is frustrating because the scores that I get on the ultra human ring for recovery and for sleep are never below like 70%. So on a scale of one to 100, I will never touch below a 70. No matter how much I drank the night before, how much I ate, how hard the training was, how terrible I slept, I am getting like 72. And there will be times where it's like, and, and Aura is the exact same way. I have talked to Aura user friends and they say that Aura basically operates off a 60 to 85 scale or 60 to 90 scale. So you never will get on Aura, you'll never get a score outside of 60 to 90. So to me, the score is not useful. And that's the primary bedrock upon which this rock, this house is built, is the, the directionable scores. So it, Ultra Human is doing the same, has the same issue. And so like, if I have a bad night's sleep, I'll get a 72. If I have a good night's sleep, I'll get an 82. But therein lies a real major problem to me in that I can't gauge how bad is a 72. I have to look at the metrics. And so the metrics are all there. You can see how bad the HRV was last night relative to the seven day trend relative to a 30 day trend. You can see how low my amount of sleep was relative to my trends relative to a basic goal amount of sleep. You can see issues there. My uh, you know resting heart rate while I slept last night, how bad was it? How high was it relative to lower, you know, to trends across a longer period of time? So you can see a broader spectrum relative to those things, but the primary recommendation isn't accurate because it's not a true zero to 100 score. And other people that use Aura, and there's a lot of people that use Aura, they, you just get used to knowing your range. Um, but even for me, three months later, it, it's just a number that I, I don't look at in the morning. I look at the metrics, but I don't look at the recommendations. And that is a major buzzkill because it's just, it's a primary piece. Um, and so I've reached out, I don't, you know, I don't know that that's gonna change. Um, and it's the same as Aura, exact same as Aura. So they're both doing it. So in summary, that's the, that's the, the major con. So the pros, you know, I'm probably getting three and a half days of battery life, four days of battery life, something like that. That's fine. Everything is really good. So across the board, I would say it is a better, less expensive device than Aura. It does the same things in a lot of ways. Aura, when you, if I was going to look at what the positive is with Aura, um, I would say that it's a little bit more simple. It doesn't give you like as much in-depth data. It's just like a little bit more warm and fuzzy presentation wise. Um, but I think the ultra human ring air gives you more access to more detailed data, no subscription service at it. So it's it, collectively over across a year or two years, it's a, just a definitively cheaper device. So you get all the data, if not some more, the same basic range of recommendations, maybe even some more data and more analysis on data available to you at a cheaper price. So the Ultra Human Ring Air is my definite recommendation if you're choosing between the two of these. 
I still think they have to clean up or even a different ring manufacturer needs to come on the market and give you failing scores. Because I've been using Whoop and Garmin for a long period of time. If you take Whoop as just even a concept, if you drink a lot and you've been training a lot, so you have like alcohol, food before you went to bed and a rigorous training scale, sc schedule, you're gonna get like a 20 the next day, a 30. You're gonna have red lights going everywhere on your recovery score with Whoop. And that is actionable. That's useful information because it's relative. How bad am I relative to other potential bad moments? You need to be able to take that relative scale of how bad was this relative to the world of bad. And you can't accomplish that with what Aura and Ultra Human are doing now with a scale that really only ranges from like 65 to 85 or 65 to 90. So that's my final thoughts, final score. Again, Ultra Human Ring Air wins the battle for sure over Aura. Um, that's the one to go with if you want a ring for tracking your health wellness metrics. It's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.